Eric Fontanez, MMAWeekly.com, standing here with the new UFC fighter, Jared Papazian. Jared, how you doing, man? I'm doing great. Everything's great. Just happy right now. Got the call from Sean Shelby, and two weeks' notice, going to fight uh, Mike Easton. Yeah, man. I, I I think it's safe to say that my tweet is the one that got you that uh, that gig with the UFC. Is that safe to say? Come on, come on, be real. Safe to say, it is safe to say. I tweeted them. You retweeted them. You everybody tweeted uh, Shelby to say you know put me in against Mike Easton. They were looking for a replacement, and it worked. So clearly, you were getting a lot of uh, support on Twitter and and social media. Uh, platforms like that so how, do you communicate a lot with fans through that through those platforms like Facebook Twitter and other sites to, to kind of get a following yeah I have a uh, Facebook and Twitter I'm kind of newer newer to the Twitter I'm starting to get the Twitter thing I'm starting to get the fans and interacting with the fans and all on Facebook and stuff like that so yeah I'm getting used to it so yeah now let me ask you this: When when you first got the call from Shelby and said, "Hey, we're going to want you in the the UFC on FX show," what was going through your mind at that point, and what kind of reaction did you have? Uh, I was ecstatic. Uh, I jumped up in the air and I screamed in my house, "Mom!" They called. Um, I'm I was ready. You know, I was training like I have a fight. I was planning on fighting in March, so I was planning on dropping to 125 uh, to get ready to fight sometime in uh, June for. Uh, for being 125, and uh, my weight was low already, so and we've been ready to get ready for a fight. So I was just I'm ready to go. So um, you talk, you mentioned 125, but obviously this fight is at 135 against Mike Easton. Have you watched a lot of tape on him? Do you know what kind of danger he brings to the cage? Yeah, we watched some film on him. Uh, he's dangerous. He's a uh, BJJ black belt. He has some decent stand up, really good low kicks, and a really good wrestler. So we're Putting all that together and we'll be prepared for January 20th. So, have you ever fought out there in uh, Nashville before? No, I haven't. I only fought one time out of uh, California. That was Oklahoma when I won the King of the Cage title, which is yeah against Abel Colm. So now you know you're not in King of the Cage anymore. You're in the big show, yeah. the UFC. Uh, obviously, one of the things that, that that fighters when they get to the organization, they're like, I want to get to the top. I want to fight the best. I want to fight the title. Is that the same uh, same idea for you? Are you going with the same approach? I'm uh, going tuning like any other fight. I'm not gonna say, oh, UFC, UFC. Everybody gets those UFC jitters. I don't plan on having. I'm just gonna treat it like it's my most important fight. But it's just gonna, I'm gonna treat it like every other fight. So um, whoever they give me is fine. I'm just gonna work my way up slowly and slowly get that belt. And that belt is going to be at 135, or are you going to try to pl uh, drop down to 125? Um, we'll take this fight. We'll, we'll see after this fight. I just want to worry about this fight, and then we'll worry about that later. So you're not looking ahead at all? No, I don't, I'm not looking past Mike Easton. He's on my radar right now, and I'm not looking past him. And where have you been working out for uh, for this fight? I, I've seen you at a few gyms. Can you kind of go over that and, and who you've been training with and where you've been training at? Yeah, I've been working on my jiu-jitsu with Alberto Crane over at Gracie Baja and Encino in Burbank. Um, working on that guillotine defense, looking all that. Because I know he likes to go for that guillotine. Working on my wrestling over at SK Golden Boys uh, with Arno Dominion. Um, working a lot on my stand-up stuff over at uh, Savant Young's Gym with uh, Rick O'Kane at uh, Fight Academy in Pasadena. So I'm just getting a lot of gr uh, group of guys helping me out get ready for this fight for short notice. So I'll, I'll be ready. Now, you, you mentioned short notice, and, and I know a lot of guys are like, you know, I, I, I want to take a full training camp. I want to take as many weeks as possible to prepare for something like this, especially with it, you're being your, with it being your debut. Does that go through your head, or, or were you just like, I, I don't care that it's short notice. I want to get in there as soon as possible in the big show. No, uh, I've been training like I have a fight, so I was, I, was always, I was ready. So it's like I've been training like I have a fight, so good thing I've been training, and uh, I'm ready to go on uh, the 20th. And your sparring partners, they look like they're not taking it easy on you, man. They, I mean, it, the big show is, you know, they're the toughest fights. Yeah. Is that the, the approach they're coming with? They're going to make sure you're going up against tough training partners leading up to it? Yeah, I'm going uh, against bigger guys like Savant Young, Martin Gatt, kind of imitate uh, uh, Mike Easton's body structure and style. Um, so when I go in the fight, it's pretty much a walk in the park. I'm not saying it's going to be walking the park, but you know. Um, you're saying you're going to walk through the guy? Is that what no, you're saying? No, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying like it'll be much easier than you know just going in there and taking her business. Well prepared, right? Well prepared, exactly. Yeah. 
That's right. That's right. Jared Papazian, he's fighting at UFC on FX. Thanks for talking with MMAweekly.com, man. Thanks for having me, Eric. Yeah.